The First Law of Magic, Chapter 1, Part 5 Velvet sat without trouble. However, her daughter was a different story. As soon as she was free from being so close to her mother, her hooves became less coordinated and she stumbled into the chair with all the grace of a china cabinet being thrown down a flight of stairs. Celestia looked at the teen with a questioning gaze. Are you alright? The lanky girl just snorted in annoyance. It's just my condition acting up. It makes me clumsy. Under her breath, she added. Like, I need help with that. Condition? Celestia asked inquisitively, feigning ignorance. Velvet answered before her daughter could. Yes, she was born with a damaged nervous system. Her lambda system took over and has stopped her from being paralyzed or anything like that, but it has damaged her coordination a little. Celestia stared at the mare for several long seconds before seemingly accepting the explanation. Meanwhile, the gears were turning within the monarch's mind. Although my fears were already confirmed, this just furthers my assumption. And unless she accepts my invitation, I will be forced to act. The strange sense of deja vu that I first received when I saw her is not leaving me, and worse, still, the mere sight of her brings thoughts of the war to my mind. This is an ill omen, indeed. So I must act quickly. Once she settled on a plan of action, she lit her horn and disguised a flash of magic as simply levitating a few magazines into a neat pile. The magic formed a message that was sent to her guard captain waiting outside. Tell me more about this... condition of yours, Twilight. Celestia accentuated her point by deliberately looking at the lanky teenage mare before her. She didn't back down one iota, merely narrowing her eyes and meeting the challenge. The condition still doesn't have a name, but it damages the pony's nervous system pre-birth, forcing the lambda system that usually controls magic to take over its job. Celestia almost smirked. Uh, that seems as though I've struck a nerve. She held back a giggle at her own joke. Oh? Is that all that happens? Celestia challenged. Twilight's eyes narrowed further, while a frown spread across her face. Several tense seconds of silence passed. Then a knock on the door drew every pony's attention. Oh, uh, I'll go get it. Velvet stood up quickly, however not quickly enough, and the being behind the door simply pushed his way in. Twilight Velvet stood there shocked for a moment, absolutely sure that she had locked the door behind her. There in the doorway stood a golden-coated unicorn stallion with a grim countenance and full armor. He ignored the elderly mare before him and stared past her. Ma'am, there's a situation that requires your attention, he said in a gruff voice. Celestia nodded and stood up. Wait outside, I'll be right out. The guard saluted and left just as quickly as he appeared. Celestia turned to the lanky unicorn and flashed an apologetic smile. I'm terribly sorry, Twilight, but it seems as though I'm needed. Please, give my proposal some thoughts. I believe that you'll be quite happy with the facilities that my school could provide for you. Twilight Sparkle smiled back hesitantly. Thank you. I'll consider it with my family tonight. The alicorn turned and left, pausing at the door and looking at the elder Twilight. Which would be free, by the way. I am willing to waive the tuition in order to have such a brilliant young mind. Oh, well, that's very kind of you, your highness. You will have our response shortly. Celestia smiled one last time and left. Outside the Sparkle House, Celestia strode through the street, a single guard at her side following silently. All around, the ponies pretended not to notice the monarch, knowing better than to give the impromptu appearance any fanfare. A block later, they were joined by a second guard who appeared from an alley. He was identical to the other guard, save for being an inch or two shorter than his colleague. He moved swiftly up to the princess's side, allowing her to whisper quietly enough for only him to hear. I will have to bring in the expert if she does not accept my offer. Ensure that she knows of the contraband spellbook in the family's living room. Use illegal magic as the excuse and go in hot in the middle of the night. The guard grit his teeth. Are you sure that is necessary, your highness? You made her quite a generous offer back there. She will not accept my offer. I wouldn't be surprised if she doesn't even write to me. What makes you think so? She has almost never left home. The few times that she did were disastrous. Beyond that, I believe myself to read characters quite well. And she didn't so much as entertain the idea even after I laid tuition and offered her personal tutoring. Her eyes did not even have a spark of interest the entire time. And worse still, I don't believe that she respects me at all. It's best to simply solve this problem with the use of a specialist and be done with it. The alicorn remarked, a small tremor of annoyance running down her spine. Are you sure that's a good idea, your highness? The guard would be much quieter. Yes, they would. However, I like to keep my stallion's hooves clean of blood whenever possible. And her hooves are already irreparably stained. Besides, the royal guard will be doing his job by keeping out onlookers and ensuring the scene is secure discreetly while she does the dirty work. Even if there is a little collateral damage, no pony will remember anything other than what the official report says. The guard earned a sharp glare from his colleague and gulped. Uh, are you sure that it'll even come to that? 
Despite her being a shut-in, her family doesn't seem wealthy, and you did give them a pretty nice offer back there. No tuition, housing, she'd be crazy to pass that up. Her smile faded, replaced by a grim look of determination. Hopefully not. However, beyond the lack of respect that I sensed, her heart contains much fear and anger. If it's up to the filly, she will not leave. The guard nodded and took position across from his colleague. Hopefully it does not come to that. Unleashing my little specialist's power is not something I do lightly. With that grim thought firmly in mind, Celestia trotted towards the castle in the distance, a nagging feeling of deja vu never leaving her. It had been almost 24 hours since Princess Celestia had come into their home and suddenly offered them a reprieve from that thing that his wife called their daughter, and still no pony agreed with him. Nightlight looked out the window and frowned. It was an incredibly nice day outside. The sun was shining, birds were chirping, and it seemed like every pony outside was enjoying it. Except for his family, of course. Twilight found direct sunlight to be hard on her skin, and had opted to spend the day reading again. Shining Armor had a mountain of homework, which he was probably receiving help with from his sister. His wife was tired, laying on the living room couch and resting her eyes. All the while, Nightlight was bound by duty and circumstance. He couldn't just up and leave his family and enjoy the day only he seemed to enjoy, especially when they remained unconvinced by Celestia's offer. He sighed, quietly wishing that he had his pipe on him. But the last time his wife had caught him with it, she had laid into him about setting a poor example for his kids. Nightly laid his head in his hooves and snorted. One of his kids was the top of his class and could have left early for basic training if he wasn't trying so hard to woo that Cadenza pony. Nightly wished him luck in that front, but he frankly didn't see it. Cadenza was an enchanting Pegasus mare with ties to the princess. And Shining Armor was a short scrawny young colt with a cursed sister. The stallion continued grumbling while leaning on the windowsill all the while watching the passers-by that trotted up and down the street. In Nightlight's mind, there was no doubt that she was cursed, or a monster, or something. He didn't know exactly what it was, and no one listened to him when he talked about it, but he knew that something was wrong. All he did know was that whatever his daughter was, it... it wasn't good. Shining had been growing up fast and strong with powerful magic until he got closer to his sister. Then his growth slowed to a stop, and all attempts to put on his muscle failed. Even his magic faltered somewhat, and though he was still the strongest shield caster in his grade, he had difficulty with any advanced spells that most of his classmates could cast with ease. The stallion ground his teeth together, as his anger got the better of him. Worst of all was his wife. She had aged faster than he had thought possible, going from a few gray hairs to a full head of it within five short years. She had just passed it off as just a little premature gray, but her family had no history of it, and if that wasn't all, her joints had started to bother her. Which in itself wouldn't have been significant if she didn't have a history of keeping in shape and eating properly. A few years ago, she even had to get reading glasses. She had perfect vision before their second child, and now she had reading glasses. Didn't sound like much, but Nightlight knew better. He had seen the prescription that she was supposed to be wearing, and it was clear that they were not simple reading glasses. But his wife stubbornly refused to buy the glasses that she needed. Was it an attempt to stop him from worrying, or something else? The stallion stopped his train of thought, noticing how hard he was grinding his teeth and the odd looks a few passers-by were giving him. Nightly frowned and got up, closing the window and stepping down onto the floor. It wasn't going to help anything if he sat there getting angry again. He had to convince his wife that Celestia's school was the great opportunity, it truly was, and he was running out of time to do that. He walked slowly up the stairs to the second floor, contemplating what possible angle would convince his wife or even just anything that he could say that would change her mind. As his mind raced, he landed on one unfortunate conclusion. He had already tried everything that he could think of. He had argued until he was almost even bluer in the face than usual, and all it took was one word from his daughter to shut it all down. A simple no from that brat had been enough for her. His well-thought-out arguments damned by those two letters. Then the stallion stopped on the stairs. His forehoof stopped in midair as an idea occurred to him. If all it took was a word from Twilight, then she was the one that needed to be convinced, not his wife. Sure, he had tried before, but he had been... sure with her. It was hard to have patience around the thing that had stolen the life from the mare that you love and stunted the growth of the sun that you cherish. He quickly trotted to the top of the stairs and down the hall. Until he came within a few feet of Twilight's door, then he stopped. He hesitated slightly as he fully realized what this plan meant. He would have to remain calm the entire time despite his feelings, and be convincing enough to get her to leave. Though he was pretty sure that he could do one, he doubted his ability to do both at the same time. It couldn't be helped. He had to do what he had to do, and no amount of doubt was gonna stop him. <sighs> get in, and out quickly. Find out why she doesn't want to leave, and convince her otherwise. Don't be authoritative unless absolutely necessary. The stallion breathed in, 
breathed out, then opened the door, stealing his resolve and calming his temper. The instant the door started opening, Nightlight could feel the pressure of Twilight's aura. It was strong and made him want to turn and flee, forgetting about this entire thing. Between his experience and his willpower, he pushed through it and walked into the room. The first thing that hit him was the smell of dust and books. Though not oppressive, it also wasn't welcoming. It reminded Nightlight of a second hoof bookstore that he used to frequent. It was stifling and musty, and the only thing that kept him coming back was the rock-bottom price of everything. Which stopped mattering soon enough, as mold contaminated most of the books and the building had to be condemned. Directly ahead with her back to him was the mare that he saw. She sat on a wooden chair, her magic glowing faintly, a book no doubt in front of her face, just out of Nightlight's view. To his right was the large bed that she had traded with her brother when it became apparent that she would grow taller than him and would need the bed far more than he would. The bedding was made perfectly, everything exactly as it should be, the pillow placed at exactly the middle of the bed underneath the tightly tucked blanket. A small ratty doll hidden halfway under the blanket was the only other thing on the bed. Nightlight nearly chuckled at the sight. That doll was almost as old as Twilight, and here it still was after all this time. My god, I didn't think Nightlight would think that of his daughter. Jesus. I wouldn't be surprised if he sometimes called her a bitch. Anyways, let's get on to our very healthy donators. Top donators TacoCat598, Peter Coltard, J10 Man, Darkseid, Gauntlet, and only one thing. Zar630, Strix, Raiden, Narwhals, Black Moonheart, Drake Love Dragon, Pastel Skies, Dospo, Madman Stan, Delta Omega, Jack Hedge, Runescythe9852, Hunter Norman, Dash of Evergreen, Rhiny Dragonwolf, Ponyman, Tal Rasha, The Toilet Snake, Sword of Brother and Mordred, Ron and Wandering, Run a Person Man Guy, Easy, Skyochia, Leslie Perkett, Jordan Peterson, Crimson Kitson A9, Lightskin, Monster Kitty, Tim Bob, Need to Life, and many more superb people. Thank you all very much for watching this video, and live life to the fullest.